Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is the Dr. Doreen is an expert in autism. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet. Dr. Doreen Grand Pichet is a visionary in the field of autism. Now you can ask her questions on Ask Dr. Doreen. Welcome back to Autism Live and to Ask Dr. Doreen. We're here with Dr. Doreen Grampiche and she is answering your questions in real time. Uh, now, we have a question that came in in two different ways and I don't know if it's the same person, so I'm gonna read one of them and we'll see. Hi, I love your show. My son just started ABA at two years of age. Don't know if it's all going the right way. I can definitely see the progress, but not sure how, how programs like Matching and Give Me will help him in the future. Oh gosh, I love this mother because yes, I lived in that neighborhood. Yeah, um, this was not what I thought ABA was. It's very robotic and far from the real world um, nursery reception. Will ABA make my child always dependent to a one-to-one -one teacher? Also, ca how, how can I generalize the program and his learning uh, at home? And the, uh, online, what somebody wrote in and said, um, same thing, two-year-old, uh, um, that everybody is telling them that it should be play-based and fun and that kids learn in their natural environment, but that her son is having a very structured DTT at the table all the time, performing what seems to be very robotic and wants to know if there's something wrong. I feel like they might be the same person, but they might be different people. Might so be. same question though, yeah. two-year-old, uh, are we doing stuff at the table? Everybody now says, you know, it needs to be natural environment, the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and everybody uses the word fun. Yeah. I'm dying to hear what, you, and of course, you know, I have an opinion on this too. Yes, of course. Of course you did. <laughs> and this might be a question that's pretty common for parents. I don't know. Absolutely. And, and I have to say that, uh, so if I could, if I, you know, if I could just tell everyone, just trust me and do it this way, that would be the easy answer. Yeah. But let me try to explain why this is the way to go. So first of all, let's say this is the way to go. Um, yes, we want our kids to have a little bit of fun, a, an average amount of fun when they're two, three, four, whatever time. But that fun will now be very, very clearly defined as reinforcers, reinforcement. And that reinforcer can only be given to the child as long as they do something educational. So, and I'll tell you, I'll explain to you why. It goes, again, back to, there's a universe of things we want our kids to learn, right? If our children actually did learn from the natural environment, we wouldn't, they would, there would be nothing different about them than typically developing kids, because typically developing kids learn from the natural environment, right? Our kids have a much harder time learning from the natural environment for a variety of reasons. One reason is they're distractible. Another reason is they are very focused on stimuli in the environment that they shouldn't be. Like they hear sounds differently, they might look at things in a different way, etc., which distracts them. <coughs> Another thing is some of their precursor skills are lacking. So some of their prerequisites, like let's say, just understanding basic language. So if you understand basic language, you're much more likely to pay attention to people talking, and from that you will learn more and more language, right? If you don't understand basic language, for whatever reason, whether you are distracted by something else, or you, don't under, you can't hear the words correctly, or you're missing every other word, or whatever it is, you're not understanding, you're just gonna isolate and not learn from the natural environment. That's the point that's really important that you bring up, okay? So now I have a universe of things to teach my child and they don't learn from the natural environment. So what do I do? What I have to do is I have to do, just like we do with everything else, we do tutoring. Think of it as tutoring. When your child falls behind on, let's say, math, what do you do? You hire a math tutor, right? Math tutor doesn't come and play and put a whole bunch of cubes there and do it in a fun way. You have to do certain things in order to learn math. You have to, we all have to memorize the tables, right? How many people actually on an everyday basis use, you know, what is six times seven? You don't, but you do because it's a precursor to a whole bunch of other stuff in your universe that you will, you naturally, now it's become one of the building blocks of the rest of your functioning. 
So all this stuff that your child is learning, matching, imitation, receptive uh, language, later expressive verbal, uh, expressive labels and so on, all of that stuff is, will be the stuff that everything else is, is built on. These are your building blocks. And it is very, very important for your child to learn these things. Now, that means it is important, and, the, and, and the why discrete trial? Why discrete trial? This is super important. Simply because it's the fastest, period. It is the fastest way to get this information in. Now, if I have 10 things I have to teach my child, and my child, if, if they do discrete trial, they learn 10 things per year, okay, then discrete trial is the way to go. If I do natural environments, they're going to learn five things per year because it's a slower process. So that means at the end of my first year, I'll still have five more things for year two, but year two still has 10 more things of its own. So you just never catch up. You need a, a, a process that's going to teach your child faster than they are aging. That's discrete trial. That is the only way you're going to get there because I will be able to teach your child not just, it's not just, and I really recommend that you go on skills, even if you're not a skills uh, user, I highly recommend you just go on skills uh, because skills is our database of like lessons and it's our curriculum and so on. And you go on there by going to skillsforautism.com. Just go in there, try to look at just the lessons, just see how many lessons there are. There are literally hundreds and hundreds of lessons for even a two-year-old. And by the time your child becomes three, there's more. It isn't just matching and give me. It's give me every single item in the universe. And then it's a matter of labeling every single item. And then it is a matter of putting those into sentences that involve uh, like descriptives and pronouns and adjectives. And that it, it's a lot coming. So right now, it might be matching and so on and so forth. Matching, by the way, is a very, very important skill. I like to talk about that for a second. Matching is how we organize a library in our brain, and that's super important. It's sorting. When you match things, you realize that these things are somehow similar, and they're different from these things. And that is extremely important for future retrieval. If we don't teach a child to, let's say, match things in the right way, they're just memorizing a whole bunch of facts. And later on, when I ask the child, like, give me something that is brown and, uh, you know, long and you can write with it, those three categories have not been put in their brain, so they won't be able to retrieve pencil. You know what I mean? So it's really important that we do this stuff the way that it is right now. Believe me, it's just like I can tell you this, that we've built this over 30 years. You have to do a little bit of discrete trial. Don't worry. <clears throat> the discrete trial very quickly becomes, when, when something is mastered, so as soon as your child learns matching and, and goes to the next level of complexity, the level they learned will now become more play-based and natural. Now, making it natural and making it like the natural environment is also extremely important because otherwise mm -hmm. it'll extinguish. Like the minute we have to teach everything and then make sure it looks like the normal environment so that it doesn't go away. Like your child then starts to use it functionally. But the actual teaching has to be in this great trial. And so please don't worry. You're doing the right thing. It's not robotic. I promise you it will become play-based in the future. Right now, if you start doing a lot of natural and play, you're wasting time. It just will be too slow and your child won't catch up. And I second that, but I want to say that I honor what you wrote in and asked. I asked the same thing. I was so excited once I had met a kiddo who was doing well and doing ABA at card. And I, you know, and it took us a couple of months to get started. And I just like couldn't wait, couldn't wait, couldn't wait. And then they came in and you know, the first time I saw them say to my son, touch car, yeah. in that very way that they say it, touch car. And I, went, I remember going, oh, we are so screwed. Yeah. Like, I wanted my child to go to college. I wanted everything. You're going to touch car? How are we going to get to college from touch car? Yeah. What? <laughs> like, and I, like, the anxiety level went up. 
Um, but I will tell you, my kid is getting ready to go to college. Touch yeah. car does get you to college. Give me car gets you to college if you keep doing it often enough at the right amount. Right. Now it has to be fun at some point. Right. Uh, but you know, there's the what I hate about when we videotape. Um, and, I, and at some point, we need to be able to show like an entire session. Yes, yes. For people to see because. That's actually a good point. Right? Because they'll see the DTT and they'll go touch this, whatever, and they don't see, and they go, good job. And then they see them arrange, good job, in that very, you know, good job kind of way. But they don't see that they like do it a number of times and they go, okay, now you get to go do the thing you said you wanted to do because yeah. they did a preference assessment first. And now we're going to go play with this yeah. so that it is reinforcing. If all they're ever doing is at the table and he's not. Not ever getting if you're not hearing that good job and now you get to play you know this for a minute and a half go here's your marble for your marble run go do your marble run good job okay now we're back here we're doing this right. and then it should be like that level of there's it should be somebody who's doing it yeah. fun but the actual thing of it looks robotic because that's on the way to getting to the point where we say, by George, I think he's got it. Yeah. And the best example that I give all the time was when my mother came to visit us, and my mother really hated that we were going to do this ABA thing. And I had said to my mother, I need support or silence. Those are the only two things I have the bandwidth for, Mom. Yes. And she did not care for that either. And then she and I went and sat in this little room with a baby monitor where I could work, and she was watching, and she was like, I, I just got to tell you, you this, you've signed up for something stupid this and I said this yeah I know mom just watch just watch and for an entire week Monday through Friday she watched as the therapist came and went and at that point they were learning uh, that he was learning like categories and functions yeah. Yeah. and features yeah. and things yeah. and they were using animals and and vehicles he was learning those two things right and she wa and she was like this is, <laughs> every day she was like this is so stupid you are wasting your time and by the time we got to Friday my son who at the beginning of the week, if you asked him, you know, what is this, a little figure of a bird, he didn't know. And he couldn't tell you anything about a bird. But on that was on Monday. And on Friday, the, the therapist held, held up the little figure and said, Jem, what is this? And he said, it's a bird. And a bird has wings. And a bird can fly. And a bird has a beak. And, and the therapist was like, yay, dude. And my mother stood up in the other room and she went, oh, my God. This is the most amazing. Why isn't this on the nightly That's news? Right, right. This is the most, because she had watched the arc of teaching him something from <clears throat> A to Z. Right. And until you have seen the arc of one thing go to A to Z, you don't know. But once, mom, once you see the arc and your kid go, kiddo gets it, imagine millions of those arcs. Right. I watched my son be on the junior high um, the very first day of junior high where I, I was told that he could not go, that he needed to be, you know, not included. And you told me you got him ready. Yeah. And you said to me, Shannon, don't take this away from him. And I watched him and I watched everything that they had taught him cohese into this person yeah. who was a social butterfly and having conversations. I watched a conversation break down and all those skills were his. At one point they were taught to him very systematically you right. could say robotically but that that was so he would learn it but eventually they taught him how to make it his own and it was it's worth it trust her it's it does so work important. and thanks for saying all that and reminding oh. me and I, just for these these any parent who worries about like the robotic nature of the yeah. tt i want to tell you something as i go to visit card sites and as i look at our therapists the number one criticism that i have is you're doing too much natural environment, not yeah, enough DTT. Exactly. So that's how good you should feel about it because it is DTT is the excellence level. It's the core of, of ABA. And we have to be very good at doing that when our kids are two and three. Oh. Because by the time they're five, let me tell you, it gets harder and harder to, you just run out of time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so be like excited. Um, and watch and don't worry watch don't worry watch for that arc of something and as soon as you see that you're going to go ah oh, okay i see it right. um and you will get super super excited all right we're going to take another short break and then we're going to be back thank you guys for writing in i'm trying to monitor it okay stick with us hey thanks for watching autism live to subscribe click here and if you'd like to check out some more of our videos, click here.